When you lie, it's misinformation. When they lie, it's cool. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. The most powerful empire that has ever existed, which is circling the planet with hundreds of military bases, and continuously works to destroy any nation who challenges its global dominion, claims that it is in a global power struggle against authoritarianism. Russia will lose the propaganda war on every front, at least in the West. It will lose every narrative dispute about alleged war crimes in the court of public opinion, whether those allegations are true or not. The U.S. military is beatable. The U.S. dollar is beatable. But the U.S. propaganda machine is an unstoppable juggernaut. Can't believe we've been watching people lose their social media accounts for posting misinformation this whole time, only for U.S. officials to come right out and admit that they've been running an active disinformation campaign where they knowingly circulate lies about Russia. Random guy says something on social media that differs from mainstream consensus. That's misinformation. He needs to be displatformed. The most powerful government in the world uses the most powerful media institutions in the world to circulate disinfo. That's fine and normal. It's actually really disturbing that U.S. empire managers now feel comfortable just leaking the fact that they are blatantly lying to the public to win a psy war against Putin. It means they are comfortable that they can get the public to consciously consent to their rulers lying to them for their own good. U.S. officials, we are circulating disinformation in an info war against Russia. Me, those U.S. officials said they're circulating disinformation in an info war against Russia. Liberals, oh yeah, right, Caitlin, everything's just a big, giant conspiracy. Twitter consults with the U.S. government when deciding what to censor, consults with U.S. government-funded think tanks to determine what people see on the platform, conducts censorship in favor of U.S. government narratives, and has the gall to label others state-affiliated media. Twitter is state-affiliated media. Don't take life advice from unhappy people. Don't take creative advice from people who don't create. Don't take career advice from people whose careers aren't where you want yours to be. Don't take advice on the Ukraine war from people who supported the Iraq invasion. People tell me, talk to Ukrainians. No matter how many Ukrainians I talk to, it will still be an objective fact that the U.S. government and Western media have a well-documented history of lying about every war, and that wanting direct hot warfare between nuclear superpowers is fucking insane. It's amazing how many arguments I run into that essentially boil down to, your opinion is Russian. It's like the word Russian stopped referring to a nation and its population and now refers to some sort of metaphysical quality of one's soul, similar to the word satanic. The other day, a longtime lefty follower called me a bootlicker for saying the U.S. military should not directly attack the Russian military in Ukraine. Opposing U.S. military interventionism and World War III is bootlicking now. War propaganda is turning people's brains into soup. The agenda to create a one-world government is not some hidden conspiracy involving secret societies and shadowy figures with Jewish surnames. The U.S. Empire is openly working to unite the planet under a single power structure which effectively functions as a single government. Washington, D.C. is the hub of the imperial political machine. Virginia is the hub of the imperial war machine. California is the hub of the imperial propaganda machine. In the end, we're just a confused species who entered into an awkward developmental transition phase because our brains evolved too fast. We wound up with the ability to think abstract thoughts, but without the wisdom to refrain from identifying with them. With the ability to invent nuclear weapons, but without the wisdom to refrain from building them. The ability to conquer our ecosystem, without the wisdom to refrain from doing so. To write vast tomes of philosophy that contain not one line telling us how to feel content in our own bodies, on our own home planet. 
to construct entire belief systems that are utterly useless for living in harmony with what is. I'm sure birds and whales went through awkward evolutionary transition phases as well before they turned into the graceful flyers and swimmers that they are today. Their early ancestors probably looked downright ridiculous for a while. It's just that their transitions didn't involve giant prefrontal cortices in their skulls that make childbirth painful and could easily give rise to the end of all life on Earth. The birth of a human baby is difficult due to the size of our enormous, rapidly evolved brains relative to the more slowly evolved pelvic bone. The birth of a sane humanity will be difficult for similar reasons. I do believe we have the ability to make the jump from this awkward transition phase to become a truly conscious species. But it looks like if we make it, it's going to be by the skin of our omnivore teeth. <laughs>